For hundreds of years, the traveler way of life was one of ancient traditions and simple tastes. Then their world collided with the 21st century. With unprecedented access to the UK's most secretive communities. They don't like anybody knowing anything about them at all. They even have their own language. This series will take you to the very heart of gypsy life. <laughs> through the biggest celebrations in the traveller calendar. Very stressed. People not turning up on time, but that's gypsy's ways. Nothing never gets done properly. Tonight, we witness a community struggling to cling on to their traditional way of life. It's my ass, Alicia, talking about my, my culture. As the modern world threatens to destroy oh. their customs, livelihoods oh. and even their homes. Let her go! She's a human being! How much longer can they preserve their unique culture? outside world intruding, travellers are afraid that their old-fashioned traditions will disappear. I think if you talk to any traveller, they will tell you they are worried that the culture will die out. It's very rare nowadays to find a traveller that travels. A lot of the young travellers go on the internet sites and they go to school, so they're being influenced by um, non-travellers. They're probably fighting a losing battle, but they are trying every way they possibly can to preserve their culture. While many traditions have died out, one of the few ways travellers keep their culture alive is by celebrating the big milestones in life. Births, weddings, and communions. For eight-year-old Irish traveller Molly, today is a huge rite of passage. But like all traveller traditions, it comes with a modern twist. I put eye mascara on me, eyes and rouge and this beauty spot and lipstick on my nails and um, lipstick and um, a beauty spot and pink rouge and get my hair done. Molly's extended family all live together on a traveller site in West London, and she's grown up next door to her grandma, Mary Doll. It's a big dress. What's your communion dress? It's one. It's one that's half as nice as this. Oh, I wish I had a dress like this. But you see, Molly is special. I wouldn't. Mary Doll grew up at a time when travellers were able to roam free. Born in a wagon in Cork. We used to have to move around and stay three and four months in all different places. Is that right? Are you happy like that? Yeah. Well, it, yeah. it was lovely. Everyone was more friendlier. And everyone was more united. Then I got rough, everything changed. So we aren't allowed to go back to them days anymore where there were nicer days. Tough laws, which have stopped travellers setting up camp where they please, means traditional life on the road has ended. And do you think it's a shame that, you know, you've obviously got a lot of grandchildren, that they'll never experience that? It is. I'd love if they did know about them things, but they'll never know about that kind of life. <laughs> to make sure her grandchildren stay immersed in traveller traditions, Mary Doll has organised a rare all-traveller communion for Molly and her cousins. Molly, I'm born in this. They're trying to preserve their society. They don't want anything to, to penetrate their society at all. They want to keep it just them. The only word's pure, basically. Pure traveller. Dressmaker Thelma's latest creation is for another rare event, a wedding between a gypsy and a non-gypsy. They don't want their society diluted by 
non-travellers. They want to keep it as pure as they possibly can. So a non-traveller coming into the travelling community is going to dilute it. So it's another step further down the line for being wiped out, basically. I would imagine there'll be people sitting at the wedding that think, this isn't right, you know, this boy should be marrying a traveller. To prove her gypsy girl credentials, the bride has ordered the wedding dress to end all wedding dresses. I haven't seen this move yet. Oh, yeah. It's moving now. Does that fly very fast? No, butterflies don't do it. This one's not flying, it's landing. It's just fluttering its wings. These are UV lights and fiber optic lights on here and moving butterflies as well. But it's really difficult. The difficult part's not putting the lights on, it's hiding all the battery packs, which are really big. I don't know whether she is trying to fit in or whether she shows that she's trying to show she knows the ways of the travellers and she knows what they want and, you know, how they dress. But if she walks in, she definitely looks more of a... Tra I don't know if you, that's possible, but she looks more of a traveller than a traveller. The proud owner of the dress is 17-year-old barmaid Sam who has known her gypsy boyfriend since childhood. I don't see it as like, I'm, I'm not a gypsy and I'm marrying a gypsy. I just see it like he's my partner and marrying him. I've known him for a long time and he was like my best mate when we used to hang around with each other. And we got on really well. And then I didn't see him for ages and then I seen him again. And then we just started going out. If he wasn't a traveller, do you think you'd be getting married to him? I don't know, like... Most like couples, when they instead of getting married, they just start living together and things like that first. But we can't live together because they don't believe in living together before you get married. So I know that he's the one that I want to bring my sister life with, so we may as well get married and then live together. 20 year old tree surgeon Pat is Sam's husband to be. He's defied traveller convention by falling in love with an outsider. Did any friends or anything think it was a bit strange you going out with a non-traveller? The next friend was like, oh, what are you, you going with a non-travelling girl for? What, why are you doing that? And I'm like, well, it's my choice, it's my life. I can do what I want. I don't say nothing to you and we all go friends, so just leave me alone. So there will be some travellers thinking, well, I don't know how we could possibly do that, marry someone from the non-travelling community. It's not done. If anyone's got a problem with it, they can feel free to come and say something to me. But it's not going to change my plans for the future. To keep traveller culture alive, if an outsider does marry into the community, they're often expected to discard their own lifestyle and adopt gypsy ways. Sam, who's lived in a house all her life, is about to go caravan shopping. I'm going to go and look at trailers to see which ones we like. But I'm dead fussy though, because I don't like the bunks on them. What are the bunks? Like bunk beds? The bunks are like the seats that you sit on. Sam's already started to stock up on goods for her new marital trailer. There's my slow cooker. Got my ironing board cover, but I haven't got an ironing board. My Chanel bedding. It's a picture of it. After their wedding in three weeks' time, Sam and Pat will be parking their caravan on a traveller's site. It seems to be a lot more of a friendly environment when you're living on the site, whereas in the house everyone tends to keep themselves to the self. Well, that's just my personal experience. I think it's so. nice how, like, they all help each other and, like, they all come round, don't they, like, they say, do you need me to eat for a pod, do you need me to wipe the floor out or anything? I think that's nice how they do that. Is it an adventure, Sam? It is a bit of an adventure, like, that moving into a trailer and it's something different, but I don't know. Like, I don't care where we live. I don't, I don't care if we live in a bin as long as I can be with you. There you go, this is our price range. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, go in, yeah. It's got a toilet in it, but 
Does it? Yeah. Pat and Sam are looking for a very specific type of caravan, one without a toilet. You don't want a toilet in it because it's like, it would never get used and it's just wasting up space. Travels would never normally use the toilets side of them. It's not really classed as a clean thing to do. It's like you're actually using the toilet in your kitchen, really. Just, you just don't do it. Where'd you go to the toilet, huh? In they got uh, sheds outside. What do you say to people who are watching who go, she's crazy, she's going to live in a trailer? Well, they're crazy because they've never tried it. I don't really think it's, like, a big deal, really. It's just, like, going looking at houses. It's not... But it's not a house, it's a thing. caravan. No, but it's just the same, isn't it? It's no, still going to be where not. we live. It's different, it's a, it's a caravan. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's still going to be where we live, so it's just, it's still going to be our home, so we don't see it any different. I think it's a lot of front, really. She doesn't want to show that she's scared. But, I mean, she, she should be scared, really. It is a big thing for it. You're getting married, you're leaving home, you're setting up your, your own home. Plus, it's, it's a completely different community for her. With Sam on the road to adopting gypsy traditions. Mary Doll doesn't want Molly and her other grandchildren to forget their roots, so has organised a unique all-traveller communion. Complete with obligatory glitter spray. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, Almighty Father. OK. Now don't come too near me, keep back a little bit. That'll do lovely. The body of Christ, two hands, lift two hands up. Okay, now round up. At their communion party, eight-year-old Molly and her cousins have turned their attention away from tradition to more pressing matters. You know, I got my shoes in the, sh in the Indian shop, yeah? I took them off because um, they were sore on my feet. I got pain and I got heart pain blisters on my feet because they were all sore. <laughs> blisters on your feet already? <laughs> hey, really do you know these shoes keep, keep getting caught on everything? Yeah, because they're baggy. And my, my shoes, my shoes are classy. What kind of music are you dancing to? Tap and hip hop music. Hip hop music, because all that mellow music, I hate it. Who taught you to dance like that? No, we just no, copy all the just learned theirs. Just learn. We just learn. Yeah, we learn after telly and stuff. So who dances like that on telly? The singers. We the we singers, love singers like what they sing. Like pop stars. Yeah. Who's your favourite pop star? Um, um, there's Beyonce. Yeah, Ryan Shearer. For Grandma Mary Doll, her all-traveller communion party has been a success. It was lovely for the children today, and everyone really enjoyed herself. It was lovely. It's important to keep these kind of decisions up because we want to let her know our families where they came from. The world has changed a lot for travelling people. Travelling people are settling more now, and there is no travelling life no more. Our travelling life is over. How long are you going to remember today? Uh, ages, ages, ages. Is it a really special day? Yeah! It's lovely, isn't it? Nice, isn't it? <laughs> the travelling community is fighting to keep their way of life free of outside influence. But 20-year-old Pat is breaking with centuries of gypsy tradition by marrying a non-traveller, 17-year-old Sam. How long's the wedding now, Sam? 
Um, a week today, isn't it? Yeah. So six days and seven sleeps. <laughs> At a specialist corset maker's, Sam's assembled her bridesmaids, a mixture of gypsies and gorgers, the traveller word for non-gypsies. Do you guys know lots of other non-travellers who are going out for travellers, or is it rare? Uh, Tommy Berry? <laughs> I don't really know that many. You don't hear it. You no. don't hear it, do you? Why does it not happen very much? What do you think of non-travellers? You say things you shouldn't say. Like certain swear words and things yeah. like that they come out with, like, we're, it's not for, for instance, we'd die before we'd swear in front of a man. I wouldn't even swear in front of me man. But a gorgeous person just out blunt says it, it's shameful. They've got no respect for, they've got no respect for whoever's around them or nothing. Oh. Kiss my ass, Alicia. Kiss my ass. I'm just shameful and come out with anything. Yeah, but you know, look how long you've been in the family. You know what to say and what not to say. Shh, now, you're making me upset talking about my culture. my culture and it's not nice. Was that the first time you'd heard some of that? Shh, <laughs> Daniel, shh. One more question. One more question. One more question. One more question. Is that the first time I've ever heard that stuff? No. Does that worry you that the community that you're moving into might be suspicious of you because of who you are? No. But the only people that judge me is the travellers that don't know me, thinking, oh, what, what's he marrying, like, her for? And then they're the only people that judge me, but I don't care what they think, because at the end of the day, I, I love him and he loves me, and we're not marrying them. Are we're they going to judge other. you, though, do you think? Well, yeah, I don't know. Pe I don't people, care. as long as they keep their opinions to themselves, which they probably will do, they can do what they want. <laughs> In the fight to preserve traveller lifestyle, the biggest conflict is over land. Many travellers want to maintain their traditions by living together on caravan sites. Every council is required to assess the needs of the travelling communities, but many travellers believe there are not enough sites provided, so want to build their own. With locals objecting, up to 90% of planning requests by travellers are turned down, so they often buy land build without permission and live there illegally. No, do you know we had just a little nail? Oh, Cliff, you're hurting. Let me take yeah. it back. Dale Farm is Europe's largest site, home to more than a thousand travellers. But although they own the land, they don't have planning permission to build on it. But seven and a half years we've been here, fighting our court cases with five years, lost everything, and now they said they just want us out. They're going to bring in the big machinery, the big bailiffs, and they're just going to smash everything, all these bricks, everything that you can see here. They want the bailiffs just to destroy that and leave us homeless. After seven years, we put up a hard fight and just, they won't listen to us. They don't want to know you say, because we're travellers and they don't want us here. They don't want us off. Tomorrow, Margaret's daughter, six-year-old Mary Ann, will take her first Holy Hello. Communion. <laughs> It's an excuse for the women to organise one last party on the site. See this? This is our too far, you see. Look at all she split. No, what's wrong? We need to shove these bars in yeah. like that. So how special is this party? This party is very special because it's going to be the last party we'll ever have in Del Farm. We'll be on the road, I imagine, after this. We might have a party on the side of a motorway next time you see us. In some car park. <laughs> Nobody knows when the eviction of Dale Farm will begin, and Mary Ann and her cousins are waiting anxiously for the council to deliver the news. You have to get this letter, it's called a 28 day notice, and no if we're not out by that 20 days, 28 days, sorry. Yeah, a lot of bulldozers comes in and uh, it digs up all the tarmac and knocks down all the walls and then um, it burns all the chalets. Oh, I'm shocked. She only knows that now. <laughs> she only found out oh, now. That don't happen. If we do, like, no, if everything can burn down, we're gonna... You have to live in the side of the road. We're gonna have to live in the side of the, ro side of the road.
Dressmaker Thelma has turned electrician to put the finishing touches to her illuminated masterpiece. We're really not sure if it is safe. It does say on the packet they're safe, but you just never know, do you? Look at Michael Jackson. He had everyone looking after him. Anything can go on fire, can't they? So you've got to be very careful. They were fireworks. Well, just like this. this could turn into fireworks. <laughs> How much does something like this cost? How much do you earn, Daniel? Oh, I can't tell you that. Well, there you go. Tip for tat, Daniel. I couldn't tell you that. It's uh, customer confidentiality. I would be ostracised completely if I told you that. Nobody would ever trust me again. 17-year-old non-traveller Sam has come with her mum, Linda, and sister Tiffany to see her wedding dress for the very first time. It's gorgeous. Oh, it's moving. How many underskirts has this got under it? 21 you've got. Is that the most anyone's ever had? Yeah. Yeah. That makes. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to look that nice. Like, I was expecting it to look nice, because Velma made it, but I wasn't expecting it to look as nice as what it looks now, why it's all come together. What's he going to think of the, when he sees the lights? He doesn't know about the lights. No, yeah. nobody knows about the lights except for my mum. Nobody knows about the lights. And so you better keep yeah, it still. Hey, right, come on, Sam, let's try your dress on. It's the minute you've been waiting for, isn't it? I am buzzing. I just can't wait to see her in the dress, walking out the house, if she can fit through the door, <laughs> and getting to the church. You excited for her? Yeah. A lot of mums would be worried by their daughters marrying a gypsy, wouldn't they? I don't know, same as anything else, isn't it? Some might disapprove. I'm made up for her. She knows what she wants. She's happy with Pat. Both me and her dad, as far as I know her dad is, Happy for her to be with him. We both like him, so no qualms there whatsoever. Can we come in? Mum. Sam, it's gorgeous. Oh. You can't hug it, you can't get near her. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, it's beautiful. It's lovely. Can't breathe. <laughs> 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 I've never seen one as stunning in my life, I've really not. Absolutely amazing. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> nice one. We were relieved that all the, the lights worked, but I am still a bit worried about the fire issue, so we've decided we will take a little fire extinguisher with us just in case. Yeah. Oh, see? <laughs> That's, <the one. laughs> That's what we want, loads of dancing. You know, all that combustion, it could just go up, couldn't it, in a ball of flames. Dressmaker Thelma is on her way to a wedding where two very different communities are about to come face to face. We're all looking forward to going to this one because this is just going to be completely different. Nothing we've ever been to before would be like this one. I know by speaking to the travellers, you know, they say they've got nothing against, obviously, non-travellers, but what they say is that they don't think anyone that isn't brought up as a traveller could live a traveller life, because it is hard, it's strict, and they'll never, ever be accepted as a traveller just because they marry into the family. They might be accepted and liked by the parents of the boy or the girl, whoever it is, but they'll never actually be known as a traveller. It's through the bottom, but it's all supposed to be dressed in me. I'm not supposed to be dressed in everyone else. In a nearby hotel, groom Pat is preparing for his big day, along with his page boy, his five-year-old cousin, Ricardo. Well, you're awfully quiet, not like you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
can't get me to death, man. I'm getting married. Two different communities coming together today. I don't really like them, I imagine. Yeah, we don't like we don't get on really, but we're gonna get on today. <laughs> Do you think there'll be many differences with the two communities coming together? Well, no, really. I think it's well, unfair to try and say that there's differences. In whatever they're, we're different than them or they're different than us. And I think it's very unfair to try and point out differences. I mean, what's that going to do for anyone? It's not acceptable, if you ask me. We ain't different. <laughs> Non-traveller Sam is about to leave her own culture behind and marry into the gypsy community. You look amazing. Absolutely stunning. In an attempt to fit in, she's already adopting traveller customs by dressing her little sister as a mini bride. <laughs> What's happened to you? I fell off the stairs. How much do you reckon it weighs, Sam? Like having my dad on my back. Oh! How much does he weigh? 14 stone. Oh. <laughs> I reckon it's about 14, 15 stone, because Pauline couldn't get that off the door then, could you? She could lift this bit <coughs> behind all your underneath bit. I, th I think it's between that and 20. Yeah. And then you lift it up, each one. 20 stone dress. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing, Mum of the Bride? <laughs> Nervous. Very. <laughs> Can you take us through your outfit? I feel like I belong in a saloon bar, to be honest. It's <laughs> all we're short of now, a few cowboys. <laughs> I bought the pink dress, got that in Wigan. I was walking past and I've been looking for weeks and weeks and weeks, couldn't find nothing. Walked past, wow, that's the one. Tried it on, right, I'm having that one. So I went in, bought that, and I was quite happy with it until I seen how Sam's try her dress on. I just wanted some accessories to it. To make his entrance in style, Pat's booked a pimped out monster truck worth a quarter of a million pounds. Right, what's that? Without talking, there you go. Very nervous. So, and I imagine Sam will be exactly the same. She'll be very nervous at the minute. Nap. So. A fairy tale carriage, identical to the one that Jordan had on her wedding day, will transport father of the bride, Brian, and Sam. How lovely are they? Beautiful. Mm. I'm going to get out the door. Get all the yellow. I feel like it is. This is, is, is going to be the best day of your life. <laughs> News of Sam's giant pink dress has spread through the neighbourhood and she's brought the traffic to a standstill. I feel like a celebrity. But for now, the lights and robotic butterflies remain switched off, a secret until the first dance. <laughs> I'm claustrophobic as well. Hang on. I feel like it now. Oh, well, it's a bit crowded, but yeah, it's brilliant. Oh, my ears stuck in my dress. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to cry. Go away. <laughs> Can we go now? Going. Yeah, we're going. Yeah, we're ready to go. 20 minutes late. Do you know your way to the church? Oh. <laughs> As Sam heads off to join the gypsy community, the residents of Dale Farm already know all about the perils facing travellers. With a site eviction looming, 
Margaret's rushing to organize six-year-old Mary Ann's communion before the bulldozers arrive. She's taking her to the local town to prepare for the big day. Well, we're going to Wigford, because Mary Ann is having some spray tan done, some fake tan, for tomorrow for her holy communion, so she'll look nice and tan. How does it feel for you walking around there knowing that there are people who don't like you very much? That's um, quite difficult. See, but the way it is, we've been reared up to that now. We, I mean, being a gypsy, we've had hostility our whole life with other people, but never, we've never been in a settled place like this before. Usually we'd be in a camp maybe for a month. Before we'd get to know anybody, we'd be gone. So now we know the people who don't like us and the ones that do like us. So we just pass, we just get on with it. We're used to it, really. Six-year-old Mary Ann is determined to face the world bronzed, as she has her first ever spray tan. What's it feel like, Mary Ann? Um, cold. Cold? Sticky. And sticky. <laughs> How do you think she looks more <laughs> Oh, I think she looks really cute with her fake tan on. So what age do you think yeah. people should start getting spray tans? Um, six years of age. And how old are you again? Six. Why is six the right age to start? Because that's big and people that six is big and people that's only about two or one is small. A spray tan is only the beginning. The following morning, the makeover steps up a notch. She's sharing the day with her cousin, who's also called Mary Ann. There's eyelashes to die for. If you just didn't have no makeup, you'd just be normal. <laughs> she feels more beautiful when her makeup's on, do you? Yeah. But you're beautiful without your makeup as well. Ah, uh, yuck. No, you're not yuck. Traditionally, a first communion takes place at age eight, but the two Mary Anns are having theirs when they're only six. The reason being why now is because we're facing eviction here in these yards. We don't know when it's going to happen. It can happen any day. So now that we have the chance to have this first Holy Communion done today, we're going to do it. Because if we get evicted out of here, we all have to go separate ways. We won't all be together, you see. So all, his, all her friends is around at the minute, so she'll have a nice little party today with her friends. Hold up your head, Jim. Right, are you ready, Marianne? Mama, there's no, there's no bell Snowbell, here. Oh, snowbell. Come back. Snowy, call it Snowy. Oh, I'm going to kill that dog. I'm going to get right. the dog off me. <laughs> Dale Farm is just one of hundreds of sites nationally waiting for the axe to fall. <laughs> Three miles down the road, at a smaller site called Hovefield, D-Day has already arrived. After years of battling for planning permission ended in failure, the council served the residents with a 28-day notice to leave. But the travellers stayed, and now the bailiffs have moved in to destroy their homes. Twenty-one-year-old Catherine has lived on Hove Field alongside her entire family for the last six years. Um, they come in and said that they that they're going to start a victim. Yeah. And it's yours on the plot. Yeah, this is my plot that I'm standing in front of. I mean, they're treating travellers like dogs. I mean, it's not fair to be doing this, is it, to travellers? What are they doing? They're going to tear it up. In support of the Hovefield residents, some local non-travellers are staging a protest. Hey, what is 
Some of them are anxious to move because they, this is a very stressful situation to them. But they're all saying to me they have nowhere to move to. Do they park up on the side of the road? Do they go into a supermarket car park? What do they do? Catherine's nephew, Jerry, lives on a plot that's safe for the moment, but overlooks the neighboring destruction. Once or twice, but I only got like a glimpse. But this is much worse. I've never seen diggers this size in my life. And it's very horrific. Because if it, you don't want a child to be seeing all this, like a baby or a two, three year old, to be seeing all this, thinking what's, gonna, what's going on. Are you old enough to see it? You know? Yeah, I'm. Well, yeah, I say so. How old are you? Well, coming on 13. Why do you think they're doing it, Cherry? It's just because they don't like gypsies, do they? They don't like travellers. On the rarest of occasions do gypsy and non-gypsy celebrate side by side. But today, the two communities have come together to see 17-year-old non-traveller Sam marry her gypsy boyfriend, Pat. Joseph Lee. Take John Joseph Lee. Take this ring. Take this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Officially a married man now. I'm not, not nervous anymore. She's amazing, isn't she? You're a lucky man. Awesome. Absolutely amazing, honestly. Festivities continue at the local social club. Where it's gypsies on one side of the dance floor and non-travellers on the other. <laughs> But what neither side knows is that they're about to witness Sam's pièce de résistance, to be unveiled by Thelma. Now it's our turn to go and switch all the lights on on the dress and hopefully they all work. We have come prepared. We've actually, you know, brought a uh, fire extinguisher with us just in case there's any problems. Safety first. So we're just making sure because she's got a lot of lights on that dress. Now they're all lighting up OK. No! Yeah, make sure everyone white is off. I'm going to tell them what. Get me off. You know what's all men and women are sitting together? No one ever notices that. Very unusual. Normally, at travel weddings, we sit apart, but everybody seems to be sat together. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys.
feel like I am literally the luckiest man in the world, honestly. I couldn't ask for a better wife than her. She is everything I've ever dreamed of. That's it. All my little prayers have been answered. And all mine have. The best I've got the best husband in the world. Partying, everyone is getting on with everyone. Well, I'm from Sam's oh, side of the family, I'm from Pat's side of the family. We are now one family. That's it, it's our family now. Is the two communities getting on better? Is that a picture of the future? Wouldn't that be lovely if they did? You know, it'd be nice if that happened, like what's happening in there, where the communities are joining together because of a couple. Whether it will or not, I don't know, because you do get the, like the staunch travellers who just don't want any intrusion at all. In Essex, Mary Ann has taken her first communion and is back home on Dale Farm. <gasps> Mud, how do you look? It's brilliant. With the threat of eviction looming, the travellers are determined this last party will be the best they've ever thrown. <laughs> With the heavy dress causing her pain, Mary Ann changes into a more comfortable party outfit. And the damage done in the name of beauty becomes apparent. When you were dancing out there, did you feel anything when the dress was on you? Yeah, I could notice when you were on the dress. You might have tell me then, I could have had to take it off. You know, with the heat and the sweat in and out the cars, it's just at the kitchen or here on the side. But I did tell her to take off the dress earlier, she wouldn't have none of it, she wouldn't take off the dress. How's the party going, Margaret? <sighs> Everyone is enjoying it. There's no talk. They're not talking about getting eviction yet because they're having a party. We're ignoring it. We're just celebrating today. We're forgetting all what's happening tomorrow and the next day. It's all about today with the children. So we're enjoying it. <laughs> With the bailiffs coming their way, Mary Ann's grandma and her friends are struggling to forget their worries. I love my grandchildren from the bottom of my heart, and I would die for my grandchildren. And if the bailiffs comes in here and think that they're just putting us out of here, goodbye, they have another thing coming, because they will have a hard fight on their hands. How can you bring children out on the side of the road with no sanitation, no schooling, no doctor surgeries, and they're always on about children's welfare. Where is the welfare for gypsies and travelling children? There is none. Three miles away at Hofield, the bulldozers are inching closer to Catherine's home. It's a shame really, isn't it? What can you do? Have you got any options left now? Nope. Tried to fight, fight the council everywhere and anywhere I could, but I can't. If I had any other way to fight them, I'd fight them, but I can't. I'll give up now, I can't do it anymore. It's too stressful. I think the council are being, just being evil. It's not nice to think of the council in that way because sometimes you think they're, they're all nice people, but they're not at all. So, because sometimes they help you and give you a home, but then they go and rip up your home. They go and take a ho your home away and then try and give you a different one that you're not used to. You're used to being on, like, in, in caravans and mobiles, and then they just want to go give you a flat or a home or a house, which you're not used to, and you can't live with it. Whilst traditional life on the road may be long gone, for the families evicted from Hovefield, there's nothing to do but take their chances by the roadside. They've pulled up on a piece of wasteland where they'll have a few hours rest before the police move them on again.
There's no but for us to go. There's no field. There is no car park. Anything that we could pull onto years ago, there's all houses built, big shops is built, big like Tesco, Zaz, Daz. It's all, it's all rebuilt, so there's no for us to move off or move on to. This is our last straw. If we don't stand up and fight now, well, this is going to keep happening. We're never going to be able to get sides built. We're never going to be able to buy a piece of ground and move in as be our own. So we're going to have to make a stand somewhere, and it's going to be here. We're going to stand and fight this dream. There's, there's a lot more people here, and there's a lot more ready to stand and fight because they're just sick of it. Get my daddy in this motor now! Next time, we reveal what it's really like to be a traveller woman. We ain't going to be doctors or lawyers, housewives. That's what we're going to be. Come here, Charlie! No! <laughs> and witness the battle of the gypsy sexes. Johnny, I'll come in in a minute. Please go away. Girls won't give you a kiss straight away, so you got to kind of beat them for the kiss. Are you happy? Yeah, I'm really happy. Most of the time.